Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Clarence Park Baptist Church on the first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe Christmas is nearly here? I mean, the World Cup and everything on at the same time just seems a bit, bit weird, doesn't it? But uh, we're beginning Advent and our new Advent series this morning, which is Follow the Star. All are welcome. So you are welcome if you're a visitor this morning, then it's really good to have you with us today. If you've returned, having not been here for some time, it's great to have you back with us this morning. And welcome to those watching online and on demand as well. We're going to come and, as we begin this Advent time, begin our service with the lighting of uh, Advent candle and a reading, and Doug's going to lead us uh, in that. And if you would respond when the words, with the words that are in the red type. As winter draws dim and bow to early darkness, you, God of light, set watch in the night sky and beckon the wise to follow. When hope hangs low in the human heart, you, loving creator, kindle compassion, breathing life into the early embers of change and sympathy. We light the first candle. We light a candle for hope, sending prayers high into the evening heavens and dreams deep into human souls. As Advent dawns, God of all hope, shine your light on the story of the saints who journeyed before us. May the seeds they planted in the world, hope, peace, joy, and love, take hold in our hearts and stretch towards the light. We light the candle for hope, May it light the way. Amen. We're going to worship together as we sing a number of songs. Uh, the first is, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. And I invite you, if you're able, to stand to join with me as we sing. And we're then going to move into singing, Praise is Rising. So for those who are able, let's stand as we sing.
that is the desire of our hearts, that as we worship, you open our eyes that we see more of you, Lord. And in this Advent time, as we reflect on what is a familiar story, open our eyes anew to things afresh in this story that you want to say to us today and through this Advent time. We see more of who you are, our holy and awesome God. May the praise rise from our hearts to give you all honour and splendour in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing Praise is Rising. You sound in good voice today. Do you feel in good voice? Yeah, you sound really good from the front here. You sounded brilliant with your singing. So uh, I think by the time that got to heaven, that was like uh, echoing around the whole of the heavenly height. height. So uh, well done. We're going to read from God's word from the book of Isaiah, and this is the first 14 verses. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, King Razin of Aaron, Pekah, son of Ramilah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied himself with Ephraim, so the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken, as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out, you and your son, Shear Jessup, and meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the launder's field. Say to him, 
Be careful. Keep calm and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smouldering stubs of firewood. Because the fierce angle of Raisin and Aram and the son of Ramelah, Aram, Ephraim and Ramelah's son have plotted you ruin, saying, Let us invade Judah, let us tear it apart and divide it among ourselves and make the son of Tabal king over it. Yet this is what the sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus and the head of Damascus is only Raisin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Ramelah's son. And if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, and the Lord asked the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. It is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He'll be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of two kings you dread will be laid waste. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. Let's hold those words in our hearts and our minds as we reflect on them this morning. Let's pray together. Lord, as we kind of explain and understand these verses a little bit more together this morning, open our eyes and hearts to receive your word, your message for us today. So speak, Lord, through all that's being prepared, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As I say, we're following a new series this morning, entitled Follow the Star All. I welcome there are leaflets in the foyer with details of all the Christmas services and the titles uh, for these uh, Advent series are in those uh, as well. Um, But what I want to do over the next few weeks is, just as the Magi followed the star uh, to Bethlehem, I want to take us on a journey as we follow the star through the story, if you like. As we do so, we're going to be taken to some of the events and some of the characters of the Nativity story, where by the end of this series, I hope and pray we'd appreciate not just the events of Christmas in a far better or deeper way, but that we also take from this series an understanding of God at work in our lives today. That God is present and dwelling among us as his people. There will be times when I'm going to be asking you to do a little bit of work So be prepared for the next few weeks to do just that. And now is one of those moments, uh, because I want to ask you a question, which I'd like you just for for a minute to turn and just discuss with the people around you, groups of two, three, four, no more than that, because it would just be too rowdy. Um, But whatever kind of fits in with the group around you. And I want to ask you this simple question, okay? Where does the Christmas story begin? Or when does the Christmas story, could have could been a better way of wording the question. So where or when does the Christmas story begin? So you've got 60 seconds, maybe slightly shorter, just to discuss that between you in a small group. And I'll be finding out where you think as we come back in a few minutes. So, okay. So Richard says it begins when Jesus was born. Uh, anyone else want something to have a slightly different? Let's get some other views. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary. Okay. Before creation. With the sin of Adam and Eve. When Genesis started. Yeah. What about this side? Did you not talk about it over this side? Yeah. And, uh, 
Okay. Isaiah, okay, yeah, since that was the reading, good, good, uh, good thinking, yeah. Before creation as well, oh, that's just a good answer, quite a mixture of answers. We're going to explore that a little bit uh, this morning. What do I want to do? I want to explore the kind of the timeline of the Christmas story um, this morning using my timeline Christmas red rope. Okay, a bit flat. Using the timeline Christmas story red rope. Never been seen in churches anywhere ever before. And this might be the last time it ever gets seen. Um, but um, this is the timeline Christmas story. And what I can do is I can attach, because we're following the star this year, I can attach the star and it moves along the rope. I oh, know. What an invention. But there we go. Uh, so the star this morning, I want us the star to kind of guide us through the, the, the real start of the Christmas story. We're gonna, it's going to stop at various different places and, and some of these things are numbered, one to eight, and they'll give us a little bit of an indication about where, how the Christmas story begins to put together. Because we've got quite a vast array there from it beginning in Isaiah to before creation to in Genesis to when an angel visits uh, Gabriel. And uh, I guess all of those moments are going to come in at some point in this Advent series. So my star starts at number one. And I've got number one in the bucket here. Um, Max, can you come and open number one for me? Okay. Well, there's just a bit of paper slid inside it, really. I didn't think about it. If they rolled up, they're not going to hang up very well, did they? This is why it's probably the last time this will ever appear in a church service. There we go. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Star has stopped over that verse. A child born of woman. The actual chapter 3, verse 15 says to this, God said, I will make you and the woman enemies of each other. This is God speaking to the devil. Your children and her children will be enemies. You will bite her child's foot, but he will crush your head. So this is God speaking to the devil in the Garden of Eden just after the fall. So right at the beginning of the Genesis story. Uh, and this is a promise that because the devil has deceived Adam and Eve and humanity, that one day child of a woman will destroy him. So, who might this child be? Well, in order to discover that, as we go through scripture, we've got to follow the star. Did it move for the Magi? Yes, it's going to move for us. There we go. Over number... Over number... Well, it's got three in there. Two, three, and four. So, I need three volunteers who are going to come out and unroll these things for me. Two, three, and four. Any help? Any age? Thank you. Catherine and Richard, so just one more at this point. So, Catherine, if you do number two. Richard, you do number three. Yeah. Charlie, if you do number four. So, these are going to tell us a little bit more about who this special child is going to be. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, says that the special child will be a descendant of Abraham. Abraham. So that's a little bit more specific for us, isn't it? It's not just any child, a descendant of Abraham, who would also be, thank you, Richard, thank you. a descendant of Abraham's son, Isaac. But we go a little bit more further than that, because in Numbers, chapter 24... It says, not just a descendant of Abraham or a descendant of Isaac, but also a descendant of Jacob. We haven't got to David yet. He's a bit further along, Richard. Yeah? So we're being quite specific here. God's got this plan right from the beginning. 
destroy the devil, the work of the devil. Descendant of Abraham, child of Isaac, son of, or descendant of Jacob. And then number five, let's do five and six. So two more. Yeah, excellent. One more. Thank you, Liz, as well. Yeah. I'm assuming you've come to help together. Five and six. So number five. This is going to give us a little bit more zeroing in on who this child will be. It's just like Christmas, isn't it? I'm wrapping all this stuff. Excellent. From Genesis 49. There's a lot of stuff right at the beginning of the Bible, isn't it? From the tribe of Judah. Go along a bit more, please, please, Mr. Star. But more than that. Now, Richard, a descent from the tribe of Judah and a descendant of? David. David. Yeah, descendant of King David. So it's not just part of the nation of Israel, which is Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, but it's from a specific tribe and then from a family of David. God promised David that the Messiah would be an heir of his kingdom. But then we get to all the way over here to number seven. An volunteer for number seven? Seven. Thank you, Rosie. Might as well have number eight come forward while you're here as well. Number eight. Yeah, Vanessa, excellent. I could spread these out a little bit, couldn't I? It's like putting the washing out, isn't it? So, our star has stopped at number seven. And it says a little bit more there from Micah, chapter five. Thank you, Rosie. Verse two will be born in Bethlehem. He says, but you, Bethlehem of Judea, you're not going to... Because Bethlehem was sort of tucked away. But God's saying, you will be special. I'm going to come back to that one in a minute. Thank you. I'll put that one that way around for a second. Well, you can read that through there, can't you? No? Okay. That's cool there. Okay. Do you know, these are about, about prophecies... So prophecy is when God says something will happen. Whether God says it directly or whether God speaks through one of the prophets, God sends messages to us, his people. How many prophecies do you think there are in the Bible or in the Old Testament about the Messiah? Anybody know? Trivia question. You might get asked this in a pub quiz. You know, How many prophecies in the Old Testament are there about the Messiah? So 25? Who said 25? Okay, so 25. Think higher or lower? Higher, higher than 25. Let's go 50. Higher or lower than 50? Higher? Higher, higher than 50. Let's go to 100. Higher than 100 or lower? Hands up for higher, because you're not very shouty at the minute. Hands up for higher, lower. Okay, it's higher. So higher than 150? Higher or lower, 150? Higher, we're going to go higher. Let's go 200. Is it 200? Higher or lower than 200? Higher. 250. Higher or lower? Higher. Higher. Let's go 300. Higher or lower? Higher. Kay wants to stick on 300. Do you think that's a good decision? That is spot on. 300. There's 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah. And this is even before the angel Gabriel has visited um, Mary. 300. So I guess the question of where does Christmas start or where or when does the Christmas story begin? Maureen gave us the answer right at the very beginning. In Genesis, even before creation because God had it in his heart. He, he loved to walk in the garden, don't we read in Genesis, with Adam and Eve. But sin 
stop that. Sin became a barrier between God and humanity. And you know, God had a plan from the beginning of time because he knew each and every one of us that he wanted to have a relationship with you. God wants to know you. So all these prophecies, the Bible speaks about all through, right back from Genesis, is about God's plan, not just to save humanity, but for God, better walk with you, in a relationship with you. I'm going to move the star on a little bit, because 400 years before the birth of Jesus, as we've read there, Isaiah spoke. A child will be born of a virgin, bringing hope. What else have I put on there? His name will be Emmanuel. I want the star in our Advent journey to stop there this morning. Because we've still got 400 years before the birth of Jesus. But Isaiah 7 verse 14 Therefore the Lord will give you a sign, the virgin will conceive, give birth to a son, and you'll call him Emmanuel. That's a really significant and important verse. These were words that were spoke to to King Ahaz. He was not a good king. He ignored God. And because of that, the people were suffering. They were living in fear of attack from the nations that were around them. But into their suffering, God speaks hope. Because in these verse, in this verse, God is saying to the people of Israel, you know, I have not forgotten you. And if you have faith in the Messiah, who is to come, you will be saved. And although you're like walking in darkness and you feel God's not with you, be assured there will be a time when you will know for certain the presence of God. God among you and with you. See, because of sin, God has been hidden. But Isaiah has said there's be a time when he will, a babe will be born, what will be called Emmanuel. We thought about that last week. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. So significant words. If you're in a moment of darkness and you feel deserted by God, to hear these words, Emmanuel, which means God with us, they're comforting words. They're words of hope that you're going to hold on to and cling to because God is saying there will be, Isaiah is saying, there's a time when God will be fully revealed to you. I say fully revealed because actually all through creation, God has never stopped loving and God has never forgotten his creation. All through the Old Testament, God has been there longing to walk once again and have a close relationship with his creation. And actually, if you're in church this morning and you're saying to me, Steve, I just feel like I'm in that darkness where I don't know where where God is and I just feel deserted by God and, and, and there's nothing going right in my life. We need to hear that actually, in our lives, God has never stopped loving us. And if you don't feel close to God this morning, God has never stopped loving you. And you need to hear these words of hope. Emmanuel, God with us. God with you. You feel that there is no hope, no future. That message is the same. God has never stopped loving you. Never stop being our hope. That's what our candle represents this week. A candle, we said, as we prayed, of hope. And you know, to the people who Isaiah was speaking to, they heard these words and they looked forward to this time when a baby would be born. 
But we're the other side of the story, aren't we? Yeah? We look back at the one who was born at Christmas. And we know that, that therefore, in this Advent, that as we follow the star, it's going to lead us to where? To the... Just checking you know the story. <laughs> to the manger. It's going to lead us to the manger. Uh, and, and actually, that place where, as we come alongside the manger, who's in it? Jesus. It's going to lead us to the place where Jesus is. To that place where God comes into our darkness, where he comes into our world to bring us back to himself. So my prayer is that we will, as we journey through Advent, be reminded that this is a story. It's an event of hope. And if you feel there is no hope in your life, then actually the birth of Jesus is to give us hope as God reveals himself to us again. His presence, his love, his plan that through faith and the events of the cross, we may walk with him and he with us. And that God will fill us with his spirit as we live as his people. Let's bow our heads, shall we, as we pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that even before creation, you've had a plan to be in relationship with each and every one of us. And we thank you that we look back to the birth of Jesus and we know that hope. So may we, through this Advent, come and kneel at that manger and see the God of hope for our life. May we kneel at that manger with, with a new heart, a new mind, a new spirit. For Emmanuel, God is here with us and among us. In Jesus' name. Amen. In a moment, we're going to share communion together. And we're going to do that because the Christmas story is linked with the Easter story. Uh, and the hope that we have of that renewed relationship is about the birth, but also the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So as we come to this table, we're going to listen to some music. And if those who are serving would come forward as the music is playing. So let's use this song to prepare our hearts as we gather at this table together.
day when God came dwelling in this earth. God put into place that master plan that had been there from the beginning of time, that plan of love for you and for me. As I said, that took Jesus, the plan was for Jesus to go to a cross, and on the cross he took onto himself your sin and mine. As the week of that Easter story unfolds, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples and he had asked them to do this meal in remembrance of him. And so this morning as we gather, if you love Jesus and you're a follower of Jesus, please share in the bread and the cup as they are passed uh, among us. But I would say, if you've not made that decision to follow Jesus, I ask you, just allow the bread and the cup to pass you by and use this time as we're here, just in the quiet and in the, the, the gentleness of this moment, just to, in your own heart, just ask God to speak to you reveal his love to you and his hope and his presence. Jesus took bread. As he gathered with his disciples, he gave thanks. And then he broke it and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, for this is my body, broken for you. He then took a cup cup of wine and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying this cup is a sign of a new covenant sealed by my blood the forgiveness of sin once and for all through his sacrifice for you and for me and as he passed it to the disciples he said drink you all of it and this is a meal that we celebrate until Jesus comes again so as we come and share in this meal Let's give thanks together for the bread and for the cup. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the hope of the Christmas story. But thank you too for the hope and the symbols of the bread and the cup on this table before us. Lord, as we share in this meal, as we come in faith, Deepen our faith, our hope, our trust in you, we pray. Through the sharing of the bread and the drinking of a cup, fill us anew and afresh with your Holy Spirit, we ask. For we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. In a moment, the bread and the cup are going to be distributed to you. Please hold on to both, and once all are served, we will then eat together and then drink together. And as the uh, elements are distributed to us, we're going to sing together, remain seated as we sing together, O come, O come, Emmanuel. So let's remain seated as we are served and we'll sing as the elements are brought to us. Thank you. Thank you. 
just to check, is everybody been served? Yeah. yeah. So let's take our bread. And we're reminded that in the, that the body of Jesus was broken for you and for me. So let's eat with thankful, grateful hearts. Amen. we take the cup it was through the shedding of Jesus's blood that we know forgiveness of sin once and for all and so we drink together as the family of God amen let's pray Lord as we and at this table, we thank you firstly for your love, your grace, your mercy for each and every one of us. And we ask you to pour out more of that into our lives each and every day. But as we come to this table, we also come to remember those who are struggling at this moment or those in our world where they need a touch of your love and of hope. So we pray for those known to us in our, our families, or friends, or neighbours, those known to us within our church, those who are unwell, we ask firstly for the healing hand to be upon them. Those who struggle with their, their mental well-being, be always their hope, and be their strength. Be their peace into the storms of anxiety and despair. Lord, we pray for those who mourn and we pray for those who this afternoon will be gathering at the memorial service. We pray for your hand to be upon each and every one who attends that they may experience your love in your holy presence. Lord, we look wider in our world and we think of those on the, uh, in, on the Italian island who, affected by the mudslide in these last days or so, we pray for that community and the help that is on its way to them. We pray for it to make a difference. We pray for those who are still missing that they may be found alive and well. Pray for the other troubled hotspots in our world. Continue to think of the issues in Iran. For the discussions and what's been brought to light with Qatar. Continue to pray for the work of BMS in Afghanistan. Continue to think of those migrants who are crossing the English Channel, putting their lives at risk. Those who are affected by the floods in India that are no longer on the news, but their lives are still devastated. Those affected, not just in this nation, but globally because of the cost of living. Increase in food prices. <sighs> the ongoing war in, in Ukraine. Lord, into those places, bring transformation and change and always hope, we pray. And so we pray for the agencies and that even that represent us as Baptists and the Baptist World Aid and BMS and other agencies that are representing your kingdom that are going in and may your love not just be known but be experienced, we pray. Lord, 
Lord, we pray for the shoe boxes that were collected recently as they are travelling and making a difference. And for the webnet boxes as they go to Albania, we pray for those children that receive them. That the hope and the wonder and the mystery of, of your birth will be experienced in their lives. And just as we pray that for the lives of our children and our grandchildren and those in our families and around us. So may you be truly honoured in all we do. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand together and we're going to sing uh, the song, the Christmas song that we learned last week. So this is a new Christmas song. And uh, as we do so, we are going to take up our communion offering, which is for the work of, I can't remember, November, is it Food Bank this month? Agape for this month. And we will be taking it then for Food Bank through December. So uh, those are able, let's stand as we sing together. Oh, yeah.
So Steve's decided I haven't been doing my job properly, so I'm back giving the notices. Sorry, chaps. <laughs> uh, that's just the welcome one, and you are all very welcome. This afternoon is our annual memorial service at 3 p.m. when we remember people we've lost. So everybody is welcome. Please come. There are still tickets, a few tickets, left for the wreath making on Thursday, uh, Wednesday evening even. Kay has some and Julie has some. If you would like to come, please see them. I think if you haven't got the money here now, they'd be happy just to know and we'll see you on Wednesday. And if you change your mind between today and Wednesday, just give them a ring. Um, I'd like to invite Alex to come forward right now. She's got some good news about yesterday that she'd like to share. Hello, everybody. I'd like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. We raised 770 pounds. Every other week, we need to wash our rooms and stick stuff together and we're doing it all to get a defibrillator for you. So we've raised 770, I need another 420. We're doing it in memory of Gregory, which is my dear friend's son who died on the 23rd of December. So if you can give, if you can buy anything, just is our gift to you. Please try and get us up to our target. Is that okay? Thank you. Amazing. Well done, everybody. Um, back to the notices. Third of, Saturday, the 3rd of December, so this coming Saturday, here at 2.30, Christmas concert. Um, it's very interactive, I understand, singing for everybody as well as listening. Um, so we invite you to that. Ladies Friendship Group, their next two meetings, 5th of December, Hedgehogs. That sounds fascinating. Seriously. <laughs> and Christmas Joy on the 19th of December. Men's group, they meet every third Tuesday of the month. The next meeting is a Christmas meal, so I'm sure you need to sign up for that. I can't see... Yes, I can see Ray. I'm blinded by these lights. I can't see anything. Ray is at the back. I'm sure there's a sign-up sheet. And then a reminder of all our Christmas services. Please pick up a leaflet, share it with people, invite them. Uh, a particular one to um, talk about the community carols around the tree. Tuesday the 6th of December. Trees there now. It's fantastic. Let's pray for better weather than last year because we all ended up drowned. And... Christmas by can Carols by Candlelight will be the 11th of December this year, a bit earlier than we normally have it, but there's something called a Football World Cup happening. I know nothing. Okay, thank you, everybody. If you want to do readings at the Carols by Candlelight service, can you let me know? Um, we'll try and accommodate as many as we can once we begin to put that service together. But for those who are able, do you want to stand with me as we draw this service to a close? We're going to use our Christmas benediction uh, for this year, and so if you would respond in whatever colour, it's not white, when we get further uh, to, the next, to the next slide. So Lord, by the leading of a star, you revealed your glory to strangers. Teach us to know you and to make you known to others this Christmas and always. Lord Jesus Christ, alive and at large in the world. Help us to follow and find you this Advent in the places where we work, meet people, spend money and make plans. As we go from here today, make us as disciples of your kingdom, living invitations to those around us so that they may know and experience more of your love. Amen. <laughs>